Hey, Jay here. You know, I was thinking the other day, lightning's a pretty cool natural phenomenon. Will we ever be able to actually produce that artificially? Seems impossible, right? The beautiful thing about science is that it allows predictability and reproducibility. We know lightning runs at 100 million volts, 40,000 amps or so, and that means we have our design parameters. That means we can design around them. Short answer. Yes. Welcome back to Plasma Channel. Now, replicating lightning, honestly, is a lot more simple than you might think. We've actually been doing it for a good 85 years now. But if we're going to understand how to replicate lightning artificially, we need to first talk about how nature does it naturally. As turbulent winds churn inside an electrical storm, ice and dust particles rub violently against each other, causing a separation of charges. These charges build in a series pattern, creating a tremendous charge separation either between parts of cloud or cloud to ground. This can reach well over 100 million volts. Luckily, we can do that artificially through four main devices the Van de Graaff generator, the Marx generator, the voltage multiplier, which is this guy and my favorite, and then we have the Pelotron. I wanna talk about the voltage multiplier first. It was invented in 1932 by two physicists and was the first device to split an atom. But with power like this, can you really be that surprised? They're built of only two components. Diodes, which only allow electricity to flow in one direction, and capacitors that store energy. That's it. Okay, so here's how these things work. You input a high voltage AC current, and on the first half of the cycle, it charges up capacitor 1. Second half of the cycle charges up capacitor 2. Third half of the cycle, capacitor 3, and so on and so on, and you can design this with as many stages as you want. The output voltage is the combined voltages of all those capacitors put together. In these devices, spark length is determined by voltage, which is entirely determined by your design. Which in the case of this guy is about 224,000 volts. But that's not nearly enough. So, uh, so how about 424,000? <laughs> 400,000 volts. Still not enough though. How about 5 million? CERN uses a 5 million volt multiplier, which kind of puts mine to shame. Right, so you basically can just scale these things up and have some fun. The last device I'll talk about in this episode is the Marx generator. It's even older, it was invented in 1924, and it's similar to a voltage multiplier, except it doesn't use diodes. It uses a more ancient technology called spark gaps. In industry, they're usually used for testing. And a 110 meter long spark proof that all you need to do is simply scale these things up. Hopefully by now I've convinced you guys that we've had the capabilities to produce lightning for well over 85 years now. If you feel like you learned something pretty cool today, do me a gigantic favor and click that subscribe button below or leave a comment or share the video. If you'd like to see the last episode, click the box to your right or I'll leave the link in the description below. You stay classy, and I'll see you next time on Episode 6 of Plasma Channel.